what's up everybody welcome back to another uh, episode of the thp strength podcast today we have a really special guest his name is mattia manigini uh he is a one foot jumper from italy uh his instagram is at tdk tia tdk tia uh so if you want to check out some freaky jumps go watch my hair he has one of the highest one foot verticals i've ever seen uh so yeah really excited to kind of get into it um Mattia, i guess if you can start out by kind of giving us a, an introduction um who you are what it is that that you do and from there we can get into some of the nitty-gritty topics yeah. i don't know if i can define myself as a dunker or a jumper so <laughs> i will i will give you a jumper but i mean it's a it's like 50 50 so i've been i've been dunking as a um, I started dunking when I was uh, like 14 years old. So it's been a long time now. Right now I'm wow. 23. So it's been like nine years of dunking. Uh, plus I started high jump like last year. I started to, I started taking it seriously last year. So, I mean, I don't know right now which kind of path do I want to want to go. But I mean, I'm still I'm still kind of figuring it out. So, Sweet. and, and yeah. could you give us some, uh, some measurements? Like, do you know your height, standing reach, vertical, all that good stuff? Yeah. Last time I measured, like, um, I think it was 47, 48 inch vert because, um, I mean, uh, I measured my, my max touch. My max touch was, uh, three meters and 63, which is like 12 feet. Wow. Um, and my my standing reach, I think it was uh close to eight feet because uh two meters and forty three, meters and forty four. So I mean, my vert is close to to forty eight, forty seven, and forty eight. So standing at six foot three, six foot two. I mean, gotcha. it's, uh, it's I thought for sure right shorter. now, but that makes, that makes more sense. No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, nah. six foot two, six foot two, six foot three with shoes. Yeah, okay. John. John was telling me earlier five eleven. I was like, he's built like, like me. It, no, I said he doesn't built look like five like eleven. Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah. What's your what? Did, what did you say your reach was? Two meters and forty three, just like, like eight feet, seven eleven. Eight feet, yeah. yeah. Rated eight, 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 eight foot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty wild. Um, so I, for perspective, for those of you listening, I am. 5'11 and a half, probably six foot and a half in shoes, maybe a little taller. And my reach, I think, is like right about eight foot in shoes. Um, so my ape index is like plus three because I have these gangly orangutan arms. Isaiah, your yours is I think the same. My ape index, I think, is higher than yours, isn't it? I think yours is higher, yeah. Mine's yeah. wait, how do you measure it? Is that wingspan minus height? It's your wingspan minus your height, yeah. Oh, I think I got you beat then. Mine's four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah. So you're yeah. six five. Yeah, because yours is six five. Six six. Six six. six, six. Maybe mine's yeah. higher. Maybe mine. Mine's six, four. What makes me weird is I have a really long neck, so my reach should be higher compared to my, to my height. But like I, I just I have a really wide or long like wingspan. But because I have a long neck, it doesn't seem like my reach is that much higher than my than my height. So I think one of the one of the biggest reasons, I guess. T, I wanted to have you on is because you are probably one of the most unknown one foot jumpers that I've ever seen. Like I would say with your vertical and your ability, it's almost like so borderline unbelievable that when people see your videos, they're yeah, like, that rim is, <laughs> is nine foot or yeah, yeah. he's seven feet tall or something like something doesn't look right about it. So why do you yeah. think that that is? I mean, probably because um, here in Italy, like uh, dunking is a little bit strange. And I mean, the the circle uh, of dunking in Italy is a little bit close. Um, it won't give you the, the same the same opportunities, I think, that the guys in the U.S. Uh, will have. So I think uh, seeing me like with. I don't know how many followers I have. I think uh, 18, 1,800, like something like that. Hasn't Chuck posted you a couple of times too? Yeah. That's <laughs> Zay, I think you can screen share it, by the way. Okay. Um, 
So is dunking in general in Italy is just not very popular, you would say? Yeah, I mean, it's popular, but uh, there's not a lot of people that that dunks at high level. So, I mean, in Italy, if we do dunk, dunk contests, like um, there's a, uh, man, like the same five or six guys that always participate in the same dunk contest, you know? Right. So, I mean, I think that, like, don't help at, like, uh, going out and and get popular at dunking because, uh, I mean, it's... There's just not... It, it's, it's just, like, it's just, repetitive. It's just so much... Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so much different than the U.S. I mean, I see in the U.S. a lot of people dunking and... These videos not, are freaking crazy. Not only <laughs> lead dunks, actually, actually, that rim to be clear is nine foot nine. But I mean, also, also that <laughs> is another problem that that I have because uh I don't have I don't have access to ten foot rims. Like uh the only rim that I have access to that is higher than nine foot nine is ten foot two. So and two. I, that's I, honestly yeah. honestly that's probably a good thing. Like it's probably made you better as a dunker to be dunking on slightly lower yeah yeah, yeah that's um, for because sure. that was that was the same with me like the first i mean i still dunk on like nine 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 ten to this day mm-hmm. like it's it's really good for training especially if you have like dead legs and stuff yeah. like that yeah oh um, so you always- i know a dunker from italy john do you remember the guy with the the really weird plant the ugliest like, plant i've ever seen the ugliest plant of all time <laughs> i know who I you're can't. talking about I can't I think remember I his name. I can't remember his name either, but he like plant like his feet are like crisscrossed or something. Like it's weird. Uh, I don't remember um, what it is. It he, is just really. I ugly. know he's from there. Um, is Marco F- Favretto? Is yeah. he? Yeah, yeah, he's from yeah, Milan. Mar- yeah, he he's also a guy from Italy as a dunker. Marco, what's his la- what's his name? Uh, F- Favretto, I believe yeah. his name. Yeah. You pull up um, his IG, Isaiah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does Joe Rogan always say whenever he wants people to pull up their Instagrams? Hey, like Jamie, Jamie, pull, hey Jamie. Hey Jamie, pull up that clip. Jamie, pull up that clip. <laughs> uh, I don't I don't know these. I don't think I know those guys very well, but I know okay, so why I know you've sent me some videos, Tia, of you competing against Lee Peck and stuff like that. Why is it that you haven't been able oh he's good. Under both off one? Is that ten feet? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the guy. This is the guy with I don't the know about. Plant. I don't know about it. Yeah, yeah. I know him. I know both this guy? of them. So, uh, have you competed against them, Tia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of times. Who usually wins? I mean, uh, I did, like, three dunk contests contest against them. Like, uh, actually, <laughs> I, I did a dunk contest against them, and uh, I left because, like, uh, I was angry. Like, uh, I, I don't remember well, but I left. Then uh, I did another contest against them, and I think the guy with the with, with the crossing feet, like uh, at takeoff one, the hideous and, plant, the worst yeah. plant I've ever seen in my entire yeah. life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's him. And and I did another one in Poland, uh, which uh, in which uh, Marco you, participated. And I did think you go against got, Bravo? No, never, never. Is he from Poland, Isaiah? Yeah. yeah. Huh. He's too what? big time, you... man. He's too big time for, the, for those contests. He only he only ever does yeah. uh what is it, dunk FIBA. elite now? Yeah, like FIBA, FIBA dunk contest. FIBA, stuff. Mm-hmm. FIBA? So you don't get invited to any of the FIBA events? Never. Did you did you start beef with uh Simon? It's, it it's crazy because the FIBA events, it's like the same like four guys <laughs> competing over and over and over and over against each other. And you yeah. know why? We have guys like we have guys like Tia who's a an anomaly freak athlete that you could we could get into that but wait why does that why does that happen i think it's just politics to be honest like i mean tia yeah. if you, you want to give your your perspective on it too i'd be really interested but yeah from my I mean, point of view it's politics yeah because uh this summer i actually tried to to participate in in a fever dunk contest but i mean I, I reached out to them on instagram on i also sent an email but they didn't. Res- they didn't respond back. So, like, uh, I will. I will participate. Out to FIBA or who? Who was it? Yeah. That you reached out to FIBA. I reached out FIBA. to FIBA. 
yeah the on ig and i also sent an email i don't i don't remember to who but it was some guy fiba but that is he didn't, he didn't respond so back interesting. so interesting you probably have to reach out to simon right because he does all the contests doesn't he doesn't he do all the contest stuff yeah 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 simon so he's, connect he's probably like dunk elite. The meta mm -hmm. yeah dunk elite is that who yeah, you reached never. out to no never I would I would try that. I'd give it yeah. a rip. I don't know. If, I don't know if you know him yeah. or have beef with him, but no, nah, no. Nah. Yeah, nah, definitely, I... definitely reach out to Simon like personally. Like uh, mm -hmm. his his email is probably on on the Dunk Elite page, but he he's definitely would be the the, the mm -hmm. way in through that because there's a lot of dunkers I've seen that are not at your skill level that I've been in that I've seen compete in FIBA. So if they yeah. if they could in, get in, you can do it. So let's I've let's make that. it let's make it happen this summer. <laughs> Yeah, I hope so. I've seen them too. We're so we're trying to get you to dunk out. camp. I think I think dunk camp would be yeah. the best thing for you. I think yeah. dunk camp would be like every year. There's one or two guys that come out and they just absolutely crush. Like they do so well. They dunk the piss out of the ball. No one knows who they are. They get posted all over the internet because of yeah. dunk academics and ball is life and whatever else happened to Connor the first year. Happened who is who else is that happened to Isaiah? Uh... Chris Bell, uh, Dak, she, she Dak. Uh, Dak, yeah, all those guys. Like they, they're like pretty unknown, and then they just fly, and people are just like, "Who in yeah. the hell are these guys?" And then yeah. they're on the map, and it literally just takes that one exposure from from like that strong of a community, because that is like the entire community. That is the entirety of the community. I tell people all the time, I'm like, it is the Olympics or like the World Championship of dunking every single year. That is like what matters. Um, and it's in the States, weirdly, which usually uh, for track, it's never in the States. So it's weird that dunking, it's it's like really in the States where it's as big exactly. as it is. So mm -hmm. I always tell people, I'm like, you need to come to dunk camp. If there's one event to go to all year, and people are like, oh, I didn't do it. I'm like, that's silly. Like, it motivates me to train all year. I always peak for it. It always gives me something to peak for. And it's probably the most relevant thing where I have to perform well, one, because all my athletes are there, and then two, um, like the video content that you can get. I, I always have a ton of people to film and stuff like that. So it's always, and, and it's irrespective of like the rim because everyone's on generally the same rims exactly. the entire time. Exactly. And that's where, that's where it's like, no one can look at you and be like, oh, well, it's a whatever, whatever, whatever. It's like, you know, you know, Isaiah can jump stupid high. You know, blue hair guy jumps super high. And you know, you know, Jordan Sutherland, one foot God and, and Jay Clark jump super high. No one's going to look at that and be like, Oh, don't move the rim low. Like, Oh, what? So they just shrunk or something. Like sometimes it is, but everyone's on the same rim. And mm -hmm. that I think creates perspective for everyone. It's like, shit, that's how high Isaiah was getting on that rim. This guy's getting almost as high or higher, you know, in, in some scenarios. And I think that again, creates so much perspective for people. It's like when a normal guy, if a normal person were to run in the hundred meter dash in the Olympics to create context, like if we threw a <laughs> soccer player in there to be like, Oh, you think you're fast? It creates perspective in that sense because yeah. everyone is on the same exact rim, which, you know, if you hypothetically did ha have that happen and then he beat Usain Bolt, people would be like, holy shit, Cristiano Ronaldo is fast. <laughs> like, That's why some of, like, as far as, like, social media, uh, I think some of my best videos, is like, on YouTube is when there's, like, a not as good dunker dunking with me because it creates that that perspective, like, Versus if I'm just like in a in a gym by myself dunking for an hour and like it's just like that I don't know you I guess you get numb to the dunks but when you have that perspective people realize how different it yeah. is yeah yeah that's why that's why I hate dunking with you I really don't <laughs> enjoy it I really don't enjoy dunking with Isaiah the other thing too and I think you know this is another reason why I wanted to have you on is you have a really unique plant there's not a lot of people that jump the way that you do um, and you cut so you're are you lefty or righty righty you're righty but you do you jump off your jump right foot. yeah 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 which is pretty rare you don't see really anyone that does cuff dunks with the right yeah jumps actually off the right. actually when i was a kid i was jumping off my off my left leg but uh i remember that when i was like 12 years old i broke my knee <laughs> like my i don't know how's it called patella i think my my patella the actual bone like, the like kneecap yeah yeah yeah, yeah. When I was a kid, I was like 12 years old. I was playing uh, in a basketball game. I remember feeling this huge pain in my knee. I looked down and I saw my patella like it was upside down almost. It was crazy. It was crazy. And uh, oh. I broke. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. I broke my knee, and I st still to this day, if I if I try to jump off my off my left leg, I feel some kind of discomfort of my on my knee. So that turned me into a a right leg jumper, even though I'm righty. And you do two foot as well, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Like super easily. Yeah, I feel I feel I feel comfortable of two feet. Uh, actually, I but feel comfortable in every plan. Like, but, but your it, strongest is definitely your right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the infamous question. We'll get into like the the meat of it because sometimes we we don't do this. And Isaiah was like, "We got to start talking about training ASAP." So maybe I'll make this the intro. Timestamp. Where are we at? What timestamp is this? How much no time? Idea. It doesn't tell me. But at this point in time, we're going to talk about the training part. I'm going to put it in the beginning of the clip. So. If you're at this point in the podcast, <laughs> skip to this point. You skip to this point to talk about the training. So you, you, like growing up, did you always train to dunk? Or like, did you have a period of time where you jumped basically every day? Because that seems to be one of the most important things yeah. that dunk, like dunkers at a super elite level did. Mm -hmm. They jumped, they had a period of time where they jumped every single day. Yeah, I think when, uh, when I was like 13 years old, Till I was 16 years old, it was like it was like three years straight, and I jumped every day, like every every day. Did you? Where did I, you get the idea to do that? I don't know. Like when I was like eight years old, my dream. I remember when we was at school, like everybody had a dream, everybody had a dream job, and when the teacher asked me what my dream dream job was, I remember uh, I answered being the greatest jumper ever. Like that was that's a what job. you wanted to say? No, yeah, yeah. no. I, I say that. I say that to the teacher. Yeah, I know that's what that's what you said. You said yeah. that at the time. That's what you wanted to be. So yeah. wait, how did you? Uh, how did you even know? Like to create con? Like, did you grow up watching Kilgannon or Michael Jordan or like? How did you know what that nah, meant? Nah, I was I was playing a lot of NBA live, and uh, <laughs> that that might gave me the the inspiration to to jump. I remember like playing. And be alive and doing the the dunk contest, and I always pick. You were like, I just want to be the best at this because yeah, of NBA yeah, Live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is iconic. Yeah. When I when I was seven year seven or eight years old, like I was playing NBA Live 06, and that was my that was my idea. So then, when did you start watching like professional dunkers and stuff like that? When I was like ten years old, eleven years old, I remember watching T Dub on YouTube. Actually. Actually, I remember when I was uh, 13 years old, I seen, that was the first time that I seen Isaiah on YouTube. Uh, I remember uh, I also followed Nico Dunks. Nico Christie. Yeah. Oh, so you were also, following the community early. Those were yeah. like the early, early days. Yeah, you, yeah. Were, also, you were a part of the community. Like you were yeah. not just a bystander by any stretch. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, so, so then also, who else? Who else did you follow? Was that it mostly? Those guys. No, I also, I also followed uh, T TFB. I followed Team TFB. Clay, what was it like when you got posted by them? Was that weird for you? Yeah, I mean it was unexpected because uh, I mean I just posted a video. I remember I posted a video with this high check, in which uh, I mean when I when I did the high, that high check, like the first idea that uh, that passed to my mind was a uh, man that was a whack jump because i uh, i felt like uh i got into the jump a little bit slow uh, you lower a lot like you're low yeah. you are really really low to the ground yeah i think that's because uh i take uh big ass steps <laughs> <laughs> yeah your your, your approach reason. is very very similar to mine <clears throat> like when i watch you jump the guys that jump like we do it's pretty much Chen Zing, that like dunk consistently. Like Sutherland doesn't really jump like we do. I don't feel like at least. I mean, when he cuffs, I guess, kind of. But generally, he has like a shorter arm swing. He's more upright. Yeah. He kind of like, he can do it off one step. He doesn't quite need as much speed. Yeah. Whereas like yeah. Dallin runs faster, like really, really fast. And he's big as shit upper body and doesn't have a big arm swing. But then you, myself, and pretty much us two have like the, a very, very similar plant where we yeah. have a super long arm swing. We're both very low to the ground, and we're like definitively power jumpers, like you, yeah. un, unquestionably power jumpers to the max, basically. And uh, we take, we take a, you get a lot more lift, but we took a, a big, uh, a big last step too. Yes. So, 
but it's not even like I don't even try to do that. It just is the nature of mm -hmm. the takeoff. Like I don't, I never. I think people always say like, "Oh, do you try to take a long last ride or a short long last ride?" And I'm like, I just try to jump as high as possible. Like I never really ever thought about it, and I yeah, think that's too. also what makes high jump so difficult because right. in high jump, if you do that, you and you know this now, you lose yeah. all of your somersault. Yeah. You might get a ton of yeah. lift, but you don't flip around the bar. Yeah. So it, and I just it, discovered it like uh, last week because last oh, week. Oh really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Last week I tried high jump. Like uh, I participated in, in the national championships. So did you compete placed, against uh, yeah. Tambourine? No, nah, uh, he didn't. He didn't participate, but he was. Was there. he scared? He didn't want to lose to you. That is that why? <laughs> he knew he, he might, might he lose. Might. Yeah, yeah. He might. He might in. I said, do you know who that is? In, in a no. couple of years. <laughs> yeah, Gian Marco uh, Tambourine is the Italian high jumper that shared the Olympic gold medal with uh, Mutaz Barsham last year. Is he year. the guy that had like a half, he has like a half mustache or something? They like call that? him half beard. Yeah, half he beard. calls himself, actually, no one else calls him half beard. I think he calls himself half beard. Okay, right? I, do know, I do know who that is. <laughs> like no one, didn't he come up with that name? Like himself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have shape. <laughs> I don't know why that's so Which funny is... to me. You, I mean, what are you are you gonna have a uh i'm trying to set up my tripod the way that i want it but are you gonna have a, a dunker name like that are you gonna call yourself like i don't know two-face or something like that no <laughs> no no i think that's corny i i love your uh your hot takes on this stuff because you're always just like people that say this are i don't remember what it was you were, you posted something it was like people that say that they're they're him they're like they're they're corny that's corny and i'm like yeah. damn he doesn't care <laughs> like I mean, j just being honest. So, I respect it. I I don't really do anything like that. I'm just I care more about the training aspect of it. But anyway, so you were saying in high jump, you started taking a shorter last stride at national champion during yeah. the national championship meet. Yeah, because uh, I was feeling like um uh, a little bit of discomfort in my in my heel because uh I've been dealing with plantar fasciitis in my in my right foot. So I started taking a uh, shorter penultimate and last step and the very next time that i that i trained um i tried to take a, a shorter penultimate step but a longer last step like keeping like the, the last step right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And so your left your like left keeping, or sorry your uh so if you're right footed so like you would step. uh so the right pushing into the left was really short the yeah. distance between those yeah. strides and then the and distance to the last stride was yeah. really long exactly and that helps me to to stay tall. And by staying tall, I feel like um the the plant the the takeoff is a little bit uh stronger, a little bit harder. And that I feel like helps you a lot generating somersault. So, did you ever try to take the last stride shorter? No, I gotta you try that. You'd be able to get any lift? No, nah, I mean. Uh, I got I got to get comfortable with it because I feel like uh when you go for a high jump it's a completely different jump from a from a high jack even though I it might seem people, similar I tell people all the time I'm like because it's he, not the same it's yeah, not yeah. the same and, I think if it, you I think if you play basketball and you do a lot of high checks and you dunk a lot you're actually yeah. stopping the generation of somersault every time yeah. you dunk so dunking is actually the opposite of what you would want to do in high jump in high jump you want to generate somersault you want to generate yeah. a lot of lift but also a lot of somersault in dunking you want zero somersault you want to lean back as far as possible so you stop your torso from rotating past vertical and by doing that i think it makes it very 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 difficult to high jump high because as soon as you step on an apron you're like well i don't want to flip i just want to go as high as possible but then you know that you just go straight up and come straight down on the bar yeah. and you don't actually yeah. let your shoulders and head and back like you know flip over the bar and you and always talk about it. It's yeah. gymnastics. It's, it's not... frustrating because it is just it is gymnastics. Like it's like it's a 50 50. It's 50 athleticism, 50 gymnastics. And it's frustrating, yep. like I said, because uh you see people with 45 inches inch verticals, which is it, it is pretty good, but it's not elite, it's not a 50 inch vert like uh you see like a small circle of people having that. And I mean, you see those people with that kind of vert, like clearing two meters and 30 bars, 
But you see people with 50 inch verticals that don't have that gymnastic part that struggle to hit 220 bars, 215 bars. Like yeah. I remember, I remember this summer. Um, it was a it was a moment, but um, I almost like I was clearing like 210 or 215 in training. I almost hit it, and at the same time, like uh, one month later, I had the same ver, but. I couldn't clear like one meters and 95 or two meters. Yep. And I had, I, I had the same vert. Like it happens all the, it, that is the, you just explained 10 to 15 years of my high jump career right there. It never made it any is. sense. I always tell people, I'm like, when I want to high jump, well, I actually jump less. I jump far less. Yeah. I usually just focus on getting really, really strong. I don't do very long technical sessions and I just focus on running the curve. And that's pretty much it. And I stay tall, stay away from the bar. That's it. It's totally different. Now, when I go to dunk, dunking consistently is what makes me better at dunking. Like, and you know this too, like you yeah. jump more often, you'll get better at jumping. But I think what happens is your ground contact time gets slower when you dunk too often, A, and you get more lift, but because you're generating the force so slowly, you can't actually somersault or flip over the bar. Whereas when you're doing you know, high jump, you have to have those really fast ground contact times and you have yeah. to ping off the ground and rotate over the, the plant Otherwise foot. Otherwise you can flip, yeah. Yes, exactly. And it, it's interesting, like you talk to high jump coaches or biomechanists and they'll say high jump's a deflection off the ground. And I usually tell them it doesn't feel like a deflection off the ground. It feels like a long pull to me. It feels like a long, like full push yeah. almost. I don't know how to explain it, but it exactly. does not feel like a ping. It doesn't feel like a deflection. It's very, very, very different. Where if I do a cuff dunk, where I do a height check or something, or not a height check, like a, you know, just jump as high as possible, punch a one-hander. On stuff like that, occasionally I'll get that pinging sensation, but it's pretty rare. And I have to be running really, really fast. And those are usually my best, some of my best jump days are on those, not all of them, but it's a very different yeah. type of takeoff. Some days I'll jump and I'll, I'll, my highest jumping day ever at CMU, it doesn't look like a deflection. I just power through the jump you know, and I pop off the ground, I get my head close to the rim. Yeah. There are days where I'm dunking and I'm doing one handers and it feels so much quicker, so much more elastic, but the jumps way lower. If you look, I think you'll see in the end of September I, is where I hit this crazy throw at like my head is right near the rim, you know, whatever else on a 10 foot rim indoors at CMU. And then I go three weeks later, I'm wearing the Lee Nings actually, the way of Wade tens. And you can see in the video, I that's that video where I review the shoe that was a video where I was pinging off the ground, but I was not getting a lot of height. I had super fast takeoff times, super fast, uh, contact or super short contact times. And my deflection, I'm taking off from really far hitting two handers, but it's like a distance two hander almost is a completely different. And so I feel like, you know, that, that distinction of, or at least understanding impulse. And if you have super high impulse, you can get super high lift. Someone actually said this on the last podcast. Lun Chen said this to you, Isaiah. He was like, dunking is slow. Dunking is relatively slow. If you look at high jump or track, it's way faster. You're talking about ground contact times, but below 200 milliseconds. So if your ground contact time is over that, and it's not something you can like volitionally lower, you can't just try to be on the ground for less time and expect to get the same outcome. It's the result. And I never understood that growing up. People always be like, oh, well, the high jump higher, you need short ground contact times. So I think, oh, well, I'll just try to get off the ground quicker. That doesn't necessarily lead to a really high jump. So what I learned is you have to adjust how you're taking off. You have to adjust your body positioning. You have to adjust the length of your steps. You have to adjust how you're pushing in and the frequency and the rhythm. And those are what lead to those shorter ground contact times and still result in high jumps. And I yeah. never understood that concept. And you're probably learning as you go, you're seeing these subtle nuances. And, and you said this, what does Guillen Marco touch? What's his peak highest touch? From what I heard, it is three meters and 50. Did he tell you that or his coach? No, no. Somebody told me that. Okay. Somebody close I've, to him. I don't want to say I've heard, uh, who's that? What did you say? Somebody close to him said that to me, but I don't okay. want to say You can't that. disclose who their name is, right, though? You don't want to throw them under the bus? Yeah. <laughs> that's really funny so i've actually heard that a lot of the european high jumpers are really hush hush about their training for the most part is that true have you found that to be the case 
I mean, uh, I haven't been around like um, that much high jumpers, but is Guy and Marco I think like that? Tam Tamber Tam. How do you I how don't do you know. pronounce his name? Gianmarco Tamberi. Um, yeah, But I'm not gonna be able to say that. like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I don't know because uh, we live uh, we live like a eight hundred kilometers away from each other. So uh, I've only Okay. seen him once, and I never seen him jump. So I don't, Has he seen I don't really you jump? know. Yeah, one time Didn't at nationals. is his coach the national coach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll talk to him. I'll talk to him. quite a bit? Yeah, yeah, a couple Does of he times. write does he try to write your training? Is he trying to write your training or coach you or what's the plan? Nah, last time that I talked with him, he said uh, that I have a, uh, like, he's seen something that other jumpers that were participating in nationals didn't have. Like, uh, I think that comes with being a power jumper and everybody was a speed jump. So, Right. I mean, That's what he's well, saying. yeah, probably you could see I have more power than them, but, You're not clearing the same heights. Did so? um, yeah. Did so? Tile jump? Scott, Scotty, so Yeah, yeah, that, did so he? Tila. Did he win? Yeah, he He did. cleared 227. Two twenty seven. He is another super interesting athlete. Has like Yeah. perfect technique. Deflects Yeah. off Super the ground. quick. Yeah. Yeah, Isaiah, can you pull up his Instagram? Do you know what his Instagram is, Tia? What it, what his uh, handle is? Uh, I don't know. I might be able Just to pull look it up. up from Sotile. Search Sotile. S O T T. I might be able to pull it I up. L E. Isaiah, you can't find it. But he really pings off the ground. Um, Yeah. he's What's his another first one. name? I think it's... Sotile. I might... S O T T I L E. Stefano. There it is. Found it. Did you get it, Isaiah? No, no, no. Did you find it? Or I, yeah, I, actually, I just did. I, I got it. I got it. Because Okay. I can screen share. I can find the, the clips that I want to find. It's really interesting, your perspective, having, I guess, knowing a lot of those guys, or at least, like, interacting with them. What has your interaction been like with track and field guys, like high jumpers and stuff like that at the elite level in Italy? I mean, uh, I've been pretty antisocial. <laughs> so I, ha I haven't been talking to, to, to these guys, but... I mean, uh, It's just says, I was, can you share your screen? There we go. Um, I was looking, um, I was looking pretty closely, closely on how they jumped and, and their run up actually. I was, yeah. uh, I was watching that. I think what's, what's interesting though, is it just, it will not apply. It just doesn't, No, it doesn't apply the same exactly. way that it does to, to, to us. trying to copy them. And I tried it for years. I tried for years to be this elegant high jumper that, you know, bounces like he does and has these kind of long strides that are fluid. It was really backside, really backside, low knee, really quick, almost basically runs off the ground. It, it feels, you know, and that's not at all how dunking feels. Would you describe either of you describe one foot dunking feeling like that? Isaiah, would you, you would just, yeah, it doesn't at all feel like that. And it's just such a different sensation. That's why I think a lot of dunkers struggle to make that that transition. And if you look at, is this from Nationals or No, were you at this meet? no, it was like a, a week before Nationals. Wow, that is a huge jump. That's so crazy. So who you should copy, I think, is... I was looking at uh, Shelby McEwen, I think. I was going to say Shelby. Shelby is probably one of the ones I would try to copy Yeah, because... because he comes off a uh, jumping Yep. off a basketball He was court. a dunk. Yeah. So, Shelby was a dunker and he, or basketball. I don't know if he still, oh, he removed it. He used to have the clip. Isaiah, do you know what clip I'm talking about? is he the guy you filmed? No, that's uh, the kid from Tennessee. I don't remember. Uh, why, why can I not remember his name right now? Um, shoot. His name is just, oh, there you go. There's our guy. Yeah. <laughs> Where is his dunk video? He posted the Jordan. He was in the Jordan thing Yeah. with Quay Parker right here, Isaiah. We took That's up him? in the free throw line. Yeah, Yeah. that's Shelby. Oh, shoot. I, didn't, I had no idea. <laughs> You, you've seen that dunk though, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then he names after. I think it So was it's a high a story. story. He was a track guy. Yeah. Well, he's now. Now he's one of the best in the U.S. Actually, 
he probably is the best in the U.S. right now. But he started in basketball, was in the like Jordan dunk contest or whatever, then went to Alabama for high jump. And then my buddy Paul ended up actually coaching him, Isaiah. He was his strength conditioning coach, Paul Wilmer. That's the good. guy that that uh, invited me to his wedding in, I think it's like in, I don't even remember where, Minnesota or something like that. Yeah. It's where Holy Cross is. It's like in the Northeast. Anyway, so Shelby converted to high jump and is now one of the best high jumpers in the country. Like he's an absolute freak and That's sponsored by crazy. Nike. Like, But his takeoff is very, very, he moved all of his stuff to pictures which is really weird. He used to have all of his dunks and stuff or all of his jumps posted on his page. But, you know, once you, be once, you become a, once you become a hot shot, you get sponsored to, by Nike. Yeah. It would be was... interesting to to know the the first bars that he cleared when he turned Started. from basketball to high jump. How high I think was he the... was jumping like I think he was jumping like close to six, eight to seven foot, I think, like in that range, like six, six to seven foot. He got better he, at Alabama. What does he jump now? Two thirty-two. Yeah. 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 yeah I think. Like so it's Around like it. seven, 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 eight. Yeah. He got better at Alabama. He got a lot better at Alabama. His weight room is not crazy impressive, and I know that because Paul coached his weight room. He just learned how to high jump, and the biggest part is you have to learn how to finesse the twisting action of the leg, and you can see how this leg is elevated right here. Yeah. He got a left. big. You got a big yeah. knee drive. So, so he he's the same as you, right? He jumps off his right leg. First yeah. off, that mobility is crazy. Yeah. Hit Yo, imagine a reverse pump with that. <laughs> like <Yeah>. that leg. <laughs> Wait, did he dunk off his right leg or his left leg? He dunked off his right. Right leg. Yeah. Oh, you you okay? You, I'm glad you guys know that because I didn't track it. <laughs> Let me see. So this is seven seven. This was ninety three weeks ago. So I think he graduated college in 2017, 2018. Jeez. Wow. That lift. He's also taller than you. He has higher hips than you do for sure, right? Yeah. Tia? That's what I thought. Let me see if we can find. So this is high. This is probably high school, right? Around here? Yeah, I think so. This is Alabama. So this is 7'6", 209 weeks ago. What was that, okay, so see, that takeoff at the beginning? Yeah. So see, do you see the uh, do you see the hip how it dra drafts, uh, drives away from the bar, Tia? Yeah. And you see how like how his shin is almost parallel to the ground, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then both arms are like going towards the bar. So you basically have your knee driving away, but your arms driving towards. And then in flight, he keeps this knee high, this arm tucks in, then he sits. That seated position, what's happening is he's basically shortening his moment of inertia so he can rotate faster. And then this arm swings back behind him. And then this leg stays kind of high and across the takeoff yeah. leg. I'm missing, I'm missing this part. I can't I can't lift my hips. I can't lift my hips. I can't <laughs> you definitely get he doesn't really either. He just arches his back. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't arch my back for my life. Like it feels like nah. It feels like, uh, man, he was nasty at dunking. Well, let me see some of those dunk videos. Damn, oh, boo. Exciting. This is old Instagram. These are tagged. <laughs> These aren't even his. We had to go to the tagged photos. <laughs> yeah, he only had this one. So we don't, I don't know what he high jumped in high school. Like, I don't see anything here that shows any any marks from high school. Yeah, I would like to know because uh, just to compare myself to my first competition. Right. Where is this, though? Um, so he signs with Alabama. Crimson Tide. I don't know. Maybe we'll ask him if he wants to get on a podcast. He's a character uh, from what I've seen, at least. Anyways, I would, I would look at him, but honestly – yeah, he, he's probably a good one for you to study because he's the exact same plant that you are. Oh, that's not what I want. How do I go full screen? Stop sharing. I guess I can continue sharing. Let me see your are you are your jumps posted on here anywhere, Tia? Uh, I don't think so. No. You keep Never them on Instagram, huh? 
You don't want to yeah, see a sky jump? Nah, because my heights are not what I would like to, to clear. <laughs> oh, here's something. What's this? Is this you sprinting? Yeah, yeah. What is your what are your sprints? I think time? it can I did a 60 meter like uh, in January, but I was heavy as hell. Like didn't you was... uh didn't you gain a bunch of weight and then lose it? Yeah. What ha- what in, happened there? In twenty in twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen. So were you just out of high school? Yeah. Yeah. The okay. first year. The first year. I went from I think I was 81, 82 kilograms. I went from 82 to 106. 82 yeah. to 106. I was, I was 106. Actually, yeah. I have a, a before and after picture. I know. You, you used to have it on your IG when you first started, and I was like, there's no way. I was like, how is this possible? And you yeah. literally went from like – I was fat. It was like dad bod. You went from like dad bod, like skinny fat, to just literally what you are now, like 4%, 5% body fat. Did you clean up your yeah, diet? I was, I was How did so you gain fed. that much weight? Were yeah. you just like drinking alcohol nah, and eating pizza? No, 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 no. I never, I never use alcohol. I don't use alcohol. I don't smoke, but I don't, I don't party. He's a real one. Yeah, I don't like those, those kind of stuff. I think they're. All right. So then, how did you, how did you gain all that weight? I mean, it was a, a mix of things. Like uh, I was eating bad. Like my diet was bad. I was also um, eating out every day like fast food and stuff and uh it was a period of time when uh i was feeling a lot of pain in my in my belly and my back because uh i got two herniated discs i still yeah, got them so i mean i might have three one, i don't know i might have more than that yeah <laughs> i also i also might have three but i don't know i hope uh it's still two but I mean, the I have a high one, uh, thoracic one, T eight T nine, and that presses uh, um, on the nerves and makes me feel a lot of pain on in my in my belly area. So because of that you have, pain, you have referred pain in your abdomen. Yeah, yeah, because of nerves, and it is it is excruciating. Like uh, it is really bad, and it was really bad. It was like at his worst in 2018, 2019. So uh, for a full year, I stopped jumping. I stopped training. Like uh, I stopped everything. I couldn't even walk, to be honest. Just to get it, try to get it healthy? Yeah. So what, what helped in the return back from that? Like, did you go to rehab or go see a physio or what did you do? Nah, because uh, I was seeing physios. I was seeing doctors, but they didn't know what to do. That's so, usually how it goes. So what did you yeah. do? Like uh, hospitals here in Italy are bad, like really bad. Like I don't know. They are free. Hospitals they are free. Man. Yeah, but I they don't know are free. If you're familiar with like this in, thing in called COVID, US. but a lot yeah, of people yeah. died in Italy during COVID. Yeah, yeah, because of that, I I couldn't get to the dunk camp this year. Maybe next year. Because <laughs> of COVID. Yeah, because of the vaccine, wow. I didn't take I didn't take the vaccine. Ah. Uh, so so I mean, I can't travel. I can't travel to the U.S. Maybe that, next year. That's that's not lifted. No. Wow. But for the U.S. For the U.S. No. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Um. Yeah. Okay. And so, then so what did to, you do? What what did yeah, you, what did you do, do for your back rehab? I mean, I just started not giving a single f. Like to be honest. <laughs> you just like, started uh, training. I just, yeah, and I still do. I still feel pain. I still feel a lot of pain actually, but I mean, I just go through it. Because that, like uh, dunking, jumping, and training makes me feel good. So if I don't do that, I mean, I still feel bad. So it's that, still that just shows you like doing something is better than doing nothing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. I think I think too. Like I've pretty much always had that approach. I've had very similar injuries to you, which is really interesting. Like I know you partially tore your labrum. You have a hernia. I now know you have herniated yeah. discs. Yeah. ruptured your kneecap um i partially torn my patella and uh yeah you pretty much just learn to train through it jump through it balance qualities don't don't like you know pick a job where you're gonna feel too too bad and i think you told me this before you're like i cannot work on my feet like if i work on my feet i can't train i can't jump and i felt the same way yeah. my vertical plummets when i do that and my back hurts and my hips hurt and everything else so it's a delicate it's a delicate balance trying to be able to train and still 
improve, take care of yourself and, you know, feel good while doing it. But I think the training through it, people underestimate that, that if you feel a little bit of pain or discomfort, oh, I have sciatic, oh, I have a herniated disc, oh, I have a torn labrum, it doesn't matter. You just train anyways, you know? It's It's literally follow, follow two things. It's train every day. Second thing is don't do something that makes it worse. If you follow like those two things, it's kind of like a roadmap to the right thing to do. Yeah. And I feel like Tia, you're pretty good at that. You don't like, I remember you telling me like, oh, I think I hurt my, my hip. I'm just avoiding this X, Y, and Z exercises. Speaking yeah. of which, let's talk about training. Cause we have not even really dove, dove into this and I want to get into this. So what is, what is your typical, so you had that period of time you jumped every day that definitely made you good. Now mm-hmm. it seems like you do a decent amount of plyos. You dunk pretty regularly and you do a decent amount of hip thrust, partial squats. Is that generally what your training right now looks like? Yeah, right now um, I'm kind of laying off the the weights because um, I feel a little bit of discomfort lately in my in my lower back and in my hips. So I'm trying to deload from that. I'm trying to heal back at eighty percent, let's say, and then mm-hmm. get back to it. But in the meantime, I've been doing uh, a lot of plyometrics. Uh, when I'm nearing a competition. I'm diving into depth jumps, a lot of depth jumps. Um, for dunking quicker, or high jump? For high jump, for high jump. Yeah. Now for, for dunking, I'll just go out and dunk. Go out and dunk and lift heavy. <laughs> and, and, trying to, That's amazing. And, trying, and trying to avoid the, the exercises that make me feel pain. Exactly. <laughs> this is what Isaiah said. It's pretty similar to what I do, more or less, in some ways. Yeah. When I want to jump high, that's what I do. When I'm trying to push, yeah, like, yeah. like really try to adapt like I am now and I have been the last couple of weeks, I just train hard. I don't necessarily – I'll I'll push through a little bit of discomfort, but dunking is tertiary can, at the moment, you know? Can you give us your – can you give us your favorite exercises that you do, like, like five, six exercises and how you change them to work around, like, your injuries? Yeah, um, I really like back squats, box back squats, because um, I really like the box underneath because um, if I feel pain in my hips and I feel like uh, I need to let go of the of the barbell, uh, I just kind of sit on it and go back and then go up. And then I also like... Uh, uh hand cleans i really like hand cleans because uh what's your best hand what oh shit oh uh, my best hand clean my uh my phone my camera just died yeah what's your best what's your best hand clean uh, i think uh i got 120, 120 you said oh did we lose him a little bit tia can you hear me your service cut out a little yeah. bit you said it was 120? 120 kilos, yeah. That's pretty freaking solid for for a hand clean. I mean, I feel I feel I can get uh higher. I feel I feel I can get I can lift a little bit of more weight. Yeah. But um, And what's your body weight right now? I don't I'm at 83 84, 84 kilos. Gotcha. Gotcha. But I don't like to overdo the hand cleans because um, if I overdo it, like I feel too much tightness, too much uh, pain around my my herniated discs and my and my thoracic area. So yeah, so I, I'm assuming you don't do any any pulls from the floor, right? Uh, I'm trying to avoid them because yeah. uh, they hurt so bad. They hurt really bad. Like last week, actually, last week or ten ten days ago. I was uh trying to lift my max uh with the with the trap bar because I I don't like the the traditional deadlift because the traditional one puts a uh, uh too much pressure on my lower back. Yeah. So yeah you I, I was trying to lift my back person. You you basically lift exactly like I do. <laughs> I was John, I was actually thinking that exact when he was saying box squat, hang clean, no pulls from the floor, it's like you guys jump the same way, similar injuries. Yeah, I think- it makes sense that you guys train similarly. Yeah, I think it's because uh, of the similar aches and pain. I think yeah. it's probably it's just the nature of of one foot jumping the way that we jump. You know, it's just like we jump that way 
you know, and, and the nature of jumping that way results in some of those injuries that just yeah. are that way, uh, good or bad, but that's just how it is, <laughs> which sucks. Yeah. But <clears throat> so go ahead. Keep, uh, Zay, I'm going to try to set up this mic. So you're, you're, uh, your lead right now, your point. All right. All right. So, so you said bo box squat, hand clean. Are there any other other ones that you really like? I really like uh, hip thrusts, but I haven't been doing them lately. But I really like them because uh, I feel like uh, when I in the period of time when I do them, like uh, I feel faster in my five or ten first five or ten meters in a sprint. And uh, I feel a little bit of a, a little bit of more explosive in the run up when I when I take off of one. Gotcha, gotcha. And are you are you sprint? Do you sprint a lot like for your training? Yeah, yeah. I feel like sprinting is a uh, is my is my favorite one of yeah. all the exercises. Of all the exercises. Doesn't bother your hip? What? Sprinting doesn't bother your hip. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Actually, actually, sprinting is the. Is the reason uh, why I turn my my labor in my in my left hip the first time? I mean, the first time that I that I tore that I tore it like uh, I was sprinting. I felt yeah, like a too. pop in my left hip, and and that was painful. I was trying but, to learn the speed jump, and then I redid it. Sprinting is the thing that really flares it up a lot. Like yeah. I have to be really careful with how I sprint because it really, really, really can piss it off. Can really, really, yeah. really piss off my hip. So. Yeah. yeah, I mean, in the in the period when I when I do them, uh, I always try to stretch the the psoas, and I mean, if I if I stretched it, like uh, it feels a little bit looser and and a little bit better. Yeah, that's good. Gotcha. good feedback. All right, so sprinting, hang, power clean, hip thrust, hip thrust, box squat, uh, calf and raise. And Have you been getting your calf raise up? Nah, nah. I actually, I actually got weak calves. Like, uh, I've seen, I've seen the video of y'all like uh, lifting a ton on on the calf raises. Wait, hold on. This isn't working. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Say it again. I've seen the videos of you two like uh, lifting like a ton on on the calf raises. So uh, I try to get into it, but I mean, I'm weak. I'm really, weak. I'm really weak. Like hey, maybe struggle. maybe I'm that'll get you. Maybe that'll get you the last little bit to to fifty. Yeah, yeah, maybe. yeah I hope so. That and seated cap, get your seated cap raise up. I think that would. Wait, go. you said you said you you do one one eighty kilos or one eighty pounds. One eighty kilos, no, nah, one eighty one eighty kilos. That's still pretty freaking strong. <laughs> I mean, I it's not gonna work. I'm gonna try this. So if you can't, if I can't hear you for a second, just give me a second. But go ahead, keep talking. I mean, it is strong, like from for average people, I think. Like, but when when we look at um, elite athletes, it is not that strong. I mean, yeah. I mean, I I seen y'all. I, I, I mean, I don't remember like uh, how much did you lift on on a cover? My best ever was four. No, no, no. My my best ever was four ninety five. That's which is two twenty five, two twenty five kilos. I think so. Close to that. Yeah. Let me let me do the math. Two, two, is this working? Is this coming through the the good mic yeah. or the bad mic? Yeah, yeah, it's working. Is it? Are you getting feedback from from my mic or no? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is good. Yeah, sounds good again. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. No, mine mine's two twenty five, and that was. I I did it for like three reps probably i think it was at the time so it's not not too far off and it felt like my achilles yeah. was gonna pop when i yeah, did it but, it's, <laughs> but it is a, a lot stronger than 180 i did only one rep with 180 i couldn't i couldn't even like get two or three like yeah no nah. um then i feel like especially as a as a one footer um you you would probably get a lot a lot of benefit from i think it. so too i like a ton 220 divided by so that's five yours is what yours is 595 i did 495 I did 495, 495. I, put, I put 500 and it literally like i thought my achilles was gonna tear i was like i'm not doing this i did reps i did rep, reps of 405 the other week 
Yeah. <laughs> what are you guys doing, man? You guys are you guys scared? <laughs> hey, I can I can rep I can rep four oh five, man. Maybe yeah, you can. You can actually. That's true. How many reps yeah. have you done of it? I've done quite a few. Four hundred five is like my; those are like my top sets. Like if I if I'm feeling good that day, you're feeling good that day. That's fair. Yeah. I get scared. Like when when there's enough weight on the bar on Caffrey's, I I'm literally scared. I'm like, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. Like four ninety five. When I had that on my back, I was like, I don't know if like I can get it onto the thing, like to <laughs> to the bar that's that's crazy what's weird to me too is i think i've done like a pin squat i've single leg like quarter squatted from the pins i think 180 180 with like a with like a five inch box or something like that that's great that but that also yeah, really wrecked my pfp that wrecked my the, the the cartilage underneath my kneecap and i was like no more i will not do that it's too much force yeah. <laughs> like, That's wild. it's not worth it the lifts i noticed the biggest correlation with my vertical are hip thrust seems to correlate pretty well um well it's more just honestly it's more just getting strong at the relevant lifts like if i get strong at any relevant lift i will all improve but if i but, but like my vertical in the short term will go down like, does your vertical in the short term go down at all, Tia? Sometimes it doesn't go down that much, but it, if I really, really lift hard, it usually will plummet. If I'm you're not saying done. if uh, you're saying if I get too much into weights, yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah, that's how many days a week do you have to lift before your vertical will start to go down? I mean, if uh, if I only lift, I don't do plyometrics and don't jump. I feel like on uh, four or five days, I'll feel the effects, the side effects. Like yeah, a, but if you're jumping, if you're jumping and doing or doing plyos at the same time, no, nah, I won't feel I won't feel the difference. Like, okay, that's how I was just telling Isaiah that today. I was like, dude, I can. I'm in the middle of loading week three of the third cycle or the, my cycle, so the heaviest loading. My vertical is not going down right now. Like it is a little bit, maybe like an inch or two. If mm -hmm. I were to back off the weights, I'd feel better, but I'll, I'm still jumping pretty high. Whereas I, if I just lift and I don't dunk, my vertical will lump it that's what happened last time i wasn't able to if i specifically max effort jumping if i can't max effort jump my vertical will will go down a lot yeah. um like if i get some jumping it doesn't it doesn't really matter but if or sorry if i get some jumping it's not sufficient it needs to be like max effort jumping and the other thing i noticed is it takes me longer to warm up i don't know if that's also the case for you like if i'm lifting a lot i can't it takes me a lot longer to get to my max but i'm also older than you so that yeah yeah, I also noticed that. Yeah. Do you notice yeah, thought, do you notice I thought when I was getting older, <laughs> to be honest. When is your when is your vertical at its absolute best, would you say? Dunking wise. Um you're saying in inches? No, 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 no. Like training wise. When you're when um, you're training, when when do you notice your vertical's at its best? If I if I pair weight training and flying matches in the same day. I feel my vertical like skyrocket. Really? So you'll yeah. complex it? Like, will you go yeah. lift and ply, lift and ply? No, I would like. No, I would like to to lift some weights, then do do the pliers after. Like, okay. um, let's say I'm in a weight room like for thirty minutes or forty minutes. Then I rest like ten minutes, and then I uh, I'll go out and do some pliers, jump, and do a dunk session. In that period of time, like I feel my, my vertical skyrocket for sure. Do you feel also that your injury risk goes up the highest during that time because of the intensity? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what absolutely. happened the last time. Yeah. That's what I noticed as well. And that's the delicate balance. I don't think, uh, you know, that it, it's like simple and you're like, oh, well, yeah, just do plows and get stronger and stuff. But, you know, it's difficult to stay healthy while you do that because you're doing the most intense activities basically at the same time. So yeah. I've, I've like tried to creatively plan out my next four or five months leading into dunk camp for that reason. Exactly. Cause everyone's like, Oh, why don't you sprint? Why don't you do plyos? And I'm like, I do. I just don't do it all the time, 24 seven all year mm -hmm. because I can't, I literally would get hurt. I think the best, generally speaking, whenever I back, I just train super hard. My vertical will go down. Um, with the dunk sessions, I've never been able to maintain high quality dunk sessions 
actually, there's one time in my entire life where I've been able to maintain consistent jump sessions on the weekend and training hard basically four or five days a week. And my vertical was okay, not great. I, I Part of it was that I really wasn't focusing on dunking. I was just focusing on high jump mostly, actually. Mm -hmm. And I never really have just focused, like dedicated all of my effort towards uh, towards just dunking. When I focus on just dunking and no high jump or anything like that, generally speaking, if I load early in the week, don't do plows or anything like that, and then dunk on the weekend, after heavy, heavy loading, like I'm talking three, four months of just like, blowing myself progressive like blowing myself up blowing myself blowing myself up <laughs> hey whoa <laughs> chill 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 <laughs> i could i could go on i'm not going to so <laughs> if if i kill myself in the weight room and training for like three four months and then back off and then front load the week and then jump on the weekend that's whenever i tend to jump my highest for dunking because it's like i've adapted really well to those that training and then i back off for a long time or like i take really easy training you know basically for a month two months three months that's when my vertical was at its highest that's what i've noticed but do you ever hear this the term soon ripe soon rotten that's more or less what happens to me i hit a peak and then i fall off really quick if i don't have like volume there to sustain my vertical yeah, it's, yeah, yeah it that, seems like that that happened the same to me it yours always looks high, but it's probably just because you jump higher than I do. <laughs> I feel like I feel like uh once you once you get to a to a high level, like um like pairing heavyweights and plyometrics gets a little bit like more dangerous. Like yes. the more the more the 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 level of a jumper, the more the the um, the dangers of a yeah. jumper it's like the higher the output that yeah. cost benefit analysis starts to weigh like you know the cost the risk reward you know ratio exactly. starts to exactly. change the risk goes up the reward comes down more because your output is so high that it's like you can't get as much out of it and still see yourself adapt because it's so intense you know for us yeah. to get stronger in a half squat i mean what do you what do you think you could half squat like down to, or not, let's say box squat, like just above parallel. What do you think you could hit? Like, I don't know, 200 plus kilos. Mm, I mean, I remember this summer I was hitting 215 kilos on a box squat. Yeah. And yours so is like a higher box, that. right? Yeah. 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 So that's a little bit, yeah, that's a little what bit I'm, above parallel. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Like if I do that, I don't think I could hit that heavy, but to get that, especially like specifically my quarter squat, because I think my quarter squat is, I think I've hit 630 or something like that, which is, I don't know, close to 300 kilos mm -hmm. in a quarter squat for reps. When I start getting up to that much weight, it's like the risk is just so high to have that much weight on my back. Same thing with calf raises. Like for me in calf raises, I'm like, if I put, yeah, I could probably do more weight on the Smith machine. Or the, or the hip thrust, like same thing. I've like almost maxed out machines before Smith machine or the, uh, at, at UMD, I almost maxed it out as well. And the risk of doing that is so high. And yeah, like you said, the reward is so minimal during those yeah. periods where it's just maintenance or whatever. I'll usually do those types of lifts, like very, very sparse or sparingly because I can't handle the volume, the frequency and intensity and volume of those exercises very like very often something has to give you know what i mean especially if i want to jump well on the weekends which is always i've learned the most important thing i have to be able to jump on the weekend if i can't jump on the weekend nothing else matters literally nothing else matters my vertical will go it, other stuff matters but i my vertical will go down very quickly and it takes like a long time to actually come back up i don't know if you've noticed that yeah 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 but high jump is a totally different animal for sure yeah 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 in fact, I, I always try to to get uh, one or two jumping sessions per week because of that fast contraction. Yeah, if I, I think if I don't do if I don't do that fast contraction, like I feel like uh, my my nervous system like uh, gets comfortable lazy. with with yeah lazy or comfortable with that slow contraction from weights. Yeah, I think with with high jump, I always noticed that weight room was important really, really early on. 
And well, there, there were two things I always noticed with high jump. If I always got my squat up to insane numbers and did plyos and never high jump, I would always high jump really, really well. Don't ask me why. I would always high jump well. The less high jump I did, the better I would high jump. If I was mm-hmm. under a lot, of, a lot of weight room volume and a lot of sprint volume. The other thing I noticed is I would occasionally jump well if my weight room volume was modest and my jump volume and jump frequency was very high. So I've always consistently jumped my best in high jump when I jumped the least, when I did the least amount of high jump volume. But that was only after I had accumulated years and years and years of high jump volume. I'm talking literally four or five days a week in high jump from 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. When I turned 16 or 17, I would high, I high jumped less frequently. But the more frequently I high jump, the lower my vertical was. And I think part of that is the sensitivity of the ground contact time. I think when you practice high jump too often, your yeah. ground contact time is slower, not because you want it to be slower, but because yeah. that's the only way you can generate lift. Whereas yeah. in dunking, it doesn't matter. You know, obviously it's irrelevant. And that's why I think a lot of the time high jump coaches will say, jump mm-hmm. less frequently, jump over lower bars, just focus on technique, keep sessions yeah. really short and quick and explosive. Um, I think the main, the main difference be, between high jump and dunking is a uh, high jumping is like a consistent high check it's a consistent 100 effort jump yes while at dunking you might try to to push at 100 but i mean if i go for for east bay for g for j reach east bay like um i can try to to, to push at 100 but i mean the output of the jump like won't be like at 100 because uh i can't use my arms like uh like i use a like I use them on a high check uh, or something like that. Yeah, I agree. And the, it's weird though. I never felt like high jump transferred. It did early on to my vertical, but then at a certain point it didn't transfer to, specifically it didn't transfer to dunking. It transferred to high jump, I would say, but it did not transfer to dunking. And that was, that was different. I would, I would recommend trying to high jump. Well, for you, it's tough because you're, you're so new at high jump where you need the reps to get it in. Mm -hmm. But I would, I would try to high jump less and see if, you know, that actually helps focus on plows and stuff like that. Give yourself a lot of rest going into sessions and see if you actually respond better. Have you ever tried that before? Yeah. When I respond well to that or no? In my, in my first competition, actually, because, uh, when, uh, when I did my first competition, like, uh, I wasn't even trying to high jump. Like, uh, at training, I was sprinting. I was just sprinting. And then uh, one guy from, uh, from from the club that I am said, yo, uh, this weekend, like, uh, you can you can try to, to do a high jump competition and, like, let's try. And I said, okay. And I wasn't, I wasn't even doing plyos, nothing. No weights, no plyos, no nothing. And, uh... And I clear two meters and eight with with ease. Like, like I actually, I actually think that uh that day I could have cleared two twenty. Yeah, then that's what I'm talking about because high jump high jumpers are volume averse. They don't they don't respond well to volume. If you talk to Jordan Westner, he'll tell you the same thing. He'll tell you when he was jumping his best and when he made the most improvement, he basically would come in, do some approaches, throw a med ball for a little bit, and leave practice. Like it was super quick in out, very high neural, like rate coding, very high frequency, but super low volume. The problem is, is that I get fat when I do that and I don't like to change my diet. So, and I like to train, so I don't, I don't really enjoy that, but I'm sure that there's, there's genetic freaks out there where they don't, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter for them. They can just not train guys like us. We like training and we enjoy that like part of it, which I feel like also plays a role. So, um, yeah, I feel like it's a little bit different. But that said, I think we are well past the time limit that I initially had set out to do. Um, so I'm going to wrap this up, guys. Thanks for listening uh, to the THP Strength Podcast. If you guys have questions, make sure you leave it in the comment section below. If you guys have a guest or something like that that you would also like to see us have on the podcast, make sure that you shoot me a DM or suggest someone and I'll reach out to them and see if they want to be on. Um, that said, peace out, guys. We will catch you on the next episode of the THP Strength Podcast. Make sure you follow Mat- Matia. Menagini. I don't know if I said it right, right. which is TDK. Is it TDK Tia? Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. TDK Tia. All right, guys. Peace out. So one.